so hello everyone in the previous session we have studied about what is greedy algorithms we have seen the concepts of greedy algorithms what are the techniques we used uh, to solve a particular question based on greedy algorithms and we have solved hard level problems in that session now in this what we are going to do is we are going to study one of the most important data structures in computer science which is trees or to be specific binary trees so before we dive into that let me tell you a little bit how important the topic is so if you go for any competitive coding like let's say that you're going for a hackathon or a contest by weekly or by weekly contest it is given that around 80 to 70 to 80 percent you can expect the questions based on trees based on the concept of trees now if you are preparing for placements to be specific product based companies then the concept of trees is really important right so this topic which we are going to study right now is really important topic with respect to just the from the perspective of computer science and at the same time from the perspective of placements and competitive coding right right so before we dive into like what is a tree what is a binary tree let us talk about why we use trees or what is the need of introducing trees into computer science so let's say that we have studied linear data structures like uh, we have studied linked list we have studied arrays we have studied array list right so we use these three data structures to store data in a linear format let's say that i have numbers from 1 to 10 1 to 10 i have numbers so i can store this number in a linear fashion using linked list or array list or arrays right by using these three data structures i can store my data in a linear fashion now my question is i don't want to store this data structure in a linear format i want to store this data in hierarchical data structure then in that particular scenario what i will do is i will store my data if I want to store my data in hierarchical order, then I will use the concept of trees. Now you might ask, oh Jabir, you know, like instead of like uh, storing data in a linear fa fashion, because storing data in linear fashion is easy. It can be like easy to access elements in my uh, overall array, right? So why you are making it complex? Why you are storing the data in a hierarchical order, right? Why you are making a pyramid structure? Uh, like while storing your data while storing your information yeah your question is valid but if you observe the real world applications most of the things are not in linear it forms a hierarchy in itself if you see food chain uh, as the number of species are decreasing in food chain the consumption is increasing so nature itself form a hierarchy right and one more thing is that the best example you can see is a family tree example so when we were in high school when we were in primary school we used to draw family tree right right so these are our grandparents and beneath them our parents parents mother and father and beneath uh, like at the very last we are now after it our like descendants will come on like in this order so if you observe the information stored in this structure like if you observe this structure this structure is a hierarchy structure it means that the information which is stored in the uh, given diagram is stored in the form of a hierarchy is stored in the form of pyramid if you see right so to store data to store data in a uh, hierarchical form we use the concept of trees i hope you have understood now another example another best example is our college structure right so if you observe our college structure like most of you guys are in college right so if you observe it in detail then you can observe a hierarchy in itself so on top we have principal and beneath principal we have uh, different departmental hods like mechanical hod electrical hod computer science hod biotechnology and under each and every hod we have different department teachers right and beneath them those teachers uh, control all the students right so if you observe one thing that in this also we have a pyramidical structure or you can say a hierarchical structure so to store data in this hierarchical fashion same we are going to use tree data structure here right and uh, this if you consider that principle as a node and uh, so if you consider that principle as a single node and the branches from 
the principal node they are four branches mechanical electrical computer science biotech so this will become sub roots of uh, sub roots of my given tree so i will talk about in the diagrammatic representation i will show you how a tree is visualized but if you observe that from principal they are like four departmental hods are coming in they are four branches coming in and from this teacher again from this hods again teacher branches are coming in so to store data in this order we use trees right and one of the real time examples if you observe nature correctly you can observe that a real life tree is a best depiction of our like Uh, actual programming tree so if you observe this is the nature right this is a nature tree and i will draw my programming tree here okay so to visualize the programming tree which we are going to construct in our code it is very similar to the natural tree which we generally observe so if you observe a natural tree you can see that um, at the very base level we have root and roots are again subdivided into like uh, different branches and on top of each and everything we have leaves so leaves is the top position of a particular tree now if you reverse this structure then you will get the tree which we are going to construct in programming so our tree visualization will look like this first of all on top of each and everything we have our root and our root is again uh, like divided into different branches you can say so let's say that it is dividing into three branches and this is my something node another node another node and again it is dividing into different nodes right into different branches so the top level node is known as a root node and uh, this dividing the the edges which you are saying seeing here this are known as branches and the last nodes which don't have any further branches which don't have any sub roots then these nodes are known as leaves of my tree so this is a visual representation of a tree which we are going to construct in programming now up to now we have understood why it is important why it is so important to understand the structure and overall working of trees and after it uh, we have understood wha- what is the need to introduce this concept and one more thing is that if you study like trees in general trees are everywhere in computer science the concept of trees are literally everywhere i can give you the best example also that if you observe your computer your computer memory is divided into different compartments and uh, first you can see that in your computer you have my computer file and in that you have different files in that you have different drives right uh, c drive d drive usb port so this is a tree data structure this structure is following the concepts of trees and one more thing is that if you study any like uh, back end architecture of any website you can take like netflix youtube or anything if you take the back end then you can observe that it is also in the form of a hierarchy so in this or in that also we are using the concepts of trees not like directly but indirectly we are using the concepts of tree in the back end application of many like software uh, like daily software applications we are using and similarly uh, when we are designing databases when we are like uh, studying uh, databases like uh, mongodb or mysql you can study that in that also we have different uh, in uh, mysql we have different schemas which is nothing but uh, storing uh, our information in the form of rows and columns in that also we are following the same hierarchy and in mongodb we are like storing the data in the form of collections in the form of documents right key value pair and in that also we are like forming somewhat hierarchy so i hope you have understood the importance of trees now uh, this is a this is a visual representation of a tree so on the top we have main root and this root is divided into different branches and the nodes which are coming under the main root is known as sub roots and the last nodes which don't have any further branches is known as leaves of my tree so this is a visual representation of my tree now let us talk about what is the meaning of binary tree so you can see that i have written something here so to explain you what is a binary tree first of all you need to remember you need to like keep this in your mind that 
binary tree is a sub concept or a sub part of a tree so a tree can have n number of branches a general tree can have n number of branches and it can follow any order it can like have n number of branches it can have a number of nodes whatever it might be but a tree is said to be a binary tree only if for a particular given node let's say that this is my root so a root node should have zero branches or one branch at max it should have two branches if it follows this structure then it is known as a binary tree so let's say that this is my root node so it can have zero nodes let's say that for this a uh, it has zero nodes so it will be a binary tree and i can take another example let's say that my root node is having one uh, branch and it is going something like that right so this is this is also can be considered as a binary tree because it is having only one branch and the third example will be let's say that my this is my root node and it is having two branches so in this you can see that i am having two branches so a binary tree a tree is said to be a binary tree only if at max it should have two branches so this is also a binary tree and the fourth, exa fourth example is let's say that i have a root and it has three branches but this it will not be a binary tree because this is not having branches less than or equal to two right i hope i understood when we call a tree a binary tree so it should have at max two branches then we call that structure of tree is uh, tree as binary tree so i hope you have understood the concept and one of the things is why i am starting with binary tree is that it has a lot of properties and it is like generally asked everywhere so that is why i have chosen this binary tree concept now let us talk about some terminologies so if you observe the food chain i am taking the example of food chain because it is easy to understand so if you observe food chain our food chain is divided into different segments right and as the pyramid increases the number of species or number of nodes or you can say number of elements in my pyramid got like get decreases similarly uh, our tree is divided into different segments and that segment is known as a level so you can see that i can uh, differentiate my given tree into different segments let's say this is my level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 so in level 1 how many elements or nodes are there one so i will write one here and in level 2 2 3 level 3 4 5 6 nodes and level 4 7 8 9 so a level is nothing but a given segment of my hierarchy right this is known as a level now let us talk about there are three things which you should get in your head when you are talking about a tree in general right first thing is level we have understood what is a level so in hierarchy we have different segments at each and every segment uh, it is like we call that segment as a level and you can see that this is my level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 and one more thing is that different programmers uh, take different uh, you can say terminologies some programmer call this as level 0 but we are like starting this with level 1 we are considering as instead instead of level 0 we are considering as level 1 so different segments of my binary tree uh, is known as a binary tree or tree in general is known as levels of my tree and after that the second thing is depth so the meaning of depth is that for a particular node what is it level that thing is known as a depth of that particular node let's say that for example uh, i am taking eight so my i can get a simple question one more question or anything like that that what is the depth of eight so you can see that for a particular node for a particular node its level is nothing but its depth so for node 8 the depth will be 4 so my answer will be 4 so i hope you have understood the meaning of level and the meaning of depth now let us talk about the third terminology which is nothing but sub tree so to understand what is the meaning of subtree uh, in math in 11, 11th and 12th we have studied right we have studied set so let's say that this is my set 1 1 2 3 and this is my set b let's say that 1 so can i say that b is a subset of a because whatever the elements present in b is a part of a so can i write that b is a subset of a similarly 
for a particular root node the left part and the right part becomes the left subtree and the right subtree for that particular node for example if i take four if i take fourth node for four the left part will become the left subtree so the what is the left sub part uh, whatever the elements present in my left side will become my left subtree and whatever the elements present on my right side that will become my right subtree right so for 4 7 is my left subtree and uh, 8 is my left uh, right subtree right similarly if i take first node for 1 the left subtree will be uh, 2 4 5 7 8 whatever the elements present on my left side will become my left subtree and whatever the elements present on my right side that thing will become my uh, right subtree for this particular node so 3 6 9 will become my right subtree so i hope you have understood what is the meaning of level depth and subtree so these are the three general terminologies we come across when we talk about a particular tree now to understand the concepts of a tree in general i have taken an example you can see that i have taken an example here so uh, let us solve this pop quiz such that we will understand the concepts of trees in a better way in a like a even more better way so let us start with our pop quiz okay so here you can see that the first thing it is asking children of four so what are the children of four whatever for a particular node uh, uh, for a particular node the left part and the right part will become the children's of that particular node here you can see that i have taken the example right so let's say that for this particular i am considering this thing as a node so for this node the children's are this and this right so whatever the elements present on my immediate element one more thing is that immediate element for grandparents your parents are their children you are their grandchildren not direct children's right so for your parents you guys are their children so whatever for a particular node whatever the element uh, immediate element or nodes present on the left side and the right side that thing will become my children of that particular node so for here for this uh, particular fourth node for this particular fourth node the children are seven and eight i hope you are getting it now after it here i need to calculate number of leaves so what is a leaf you need to understand one thing that uh, here these are different roots or you can say different nodes so a particular these are also nodes 7 8 5 6 9 these are also nodes but a node is said to be a leaf only if it don't have any branches or you can say its branches is pointing to null it means that for 7 there are no sub branches there is no division happening there or you can uh, represent it as a null so for a particular node if the branches are null then that particular node is known as a leaf i hope you are getting it right and yeah this is my left part this is my right part right if both the left and right part are null or let's say that for a particular node there are no any more further branches then that particular node is said to be a leaf so for this structure 7 8 uh, 5 and 9 will become my leaves of a uh, this binary tree so 7 8 5 6 sorry uh, 9 not 6 9 will become my leaf or you can say that the last level whatever the elements present on my last level of my binary tree that will become my leaf of my particular binary tree so i hope you got the logic here now the third thing is parent of 6 so the immediate uh, like uh, node present on top of a particular node will become their parent so here family tree is the best example so for you the immediate parents are whatever the elements present on immediate top of your hierarchy that thing will become my parent so for this for this six the immediate uh, node which is present on its top of hierarchy is three so three will become the parent and one will become the grandparent or you can say uh, parents parent right so hope you are getting it so for six the parent of six is three now level of two so i need to calculate what is the level of two so this is my level one this is my level two this is my level three and this is my level four so what is the level of two 
that is nothing but 2 so I will print the level of 2 is 2 now I need to calculate sub branch sub trees of 1 and 2 so I have said you that for a particular node whatever the elements present on the left side that thing will become my left sub tree and whatever the elements present on the right side that thing will become my right sub tree so for one let me write it here so for one node whatever the elements present 2 is present 4 is present 5 is present and 7 8 so this thing will become my left sub tree and for uh, right part 3 is present 6 is present 9 is present so this will become my for one the subtree of one is this now subtree of two so for two let me uh, draw it here so for two uh, the left part is 4 7 8 so this will become my left subtree and the right part is only 5 so this will become my right subtree so for 2 this is the subtree and for 1 this is my subtree so I have drawn these two things now uh, ancestors of 8 so what are the ancestors of 8 whatever the elements present on top of like my particular thing then that thing will become my ancestors so for 8 4 2 1 are my ancestors so for 1 uh, 4 2 1 will become my for 8 4 2 1 will become my ancestors of this particular node i hope you have understood overall terminologies what is a child what is a leaf parent level of a subtree depth subtree what is subtree ancestors and all those kind of things and i want you guys to draw a particular binary tree whatever you wanna draw just draw it and uh, write some questions what is the child what is the number of leaves what are the number of parents here for a particular node right uh, draw it and answer and try to answer it by yourself such that it will become a little bit clear to you guys that what are the terminologies that we are using here now we up to now we have studied about uh, the structure and the con like concepts of terminologies of binary tree now let us talk about how we are supposed to build a particular binary tree in my code so to build a particular thing a particular tree binary tree in my code we generally follow uh, three approaches and we call that three approaches as pre-order in order post order so these three approaches has three different rules or you can say uh, three different these three approaches follows different rule and the rule is pre-approach uh, in pre-order approach the root node the first thing is root node should come first root node should come first after it, the left part of my tree after it, the right part of my tree so this is a rule for pre-order sequencing and we'll talk about when we are like uh, traversing uh, when we are traversing in a particular uh, tree we'll talk about what is pre-order in order post order in the next slides but for now to build a tree we follow these three approaches and we generally build most of the times we build tree using pre-order sequence not uh, in order or post order in question it is specifically asking to build a tree based on post order or in order in that particular thing you will build tree on that particular rules right so for in order for in order what the rule says is the left part should come first after a root node after it, the third thing is the right part of my subtree right right part of my tree and post order says that the left part should come first after the right part and finally my root node so this is the uh, like different approaches to build a uh, binary tree in my programming so here what we are going to do is we are going to use the approach of pre-order to build my binary tree first in uh, from in pre-order the thing is first root node after it left part after it right part so here you can see that this is my given data and one more thing you need to understand here is that minus one represents null node so you can see that here uh, I, am, I have represented the leaf nodes which don't have any branches as null so this null here is represented by minus one okay now let us try to build this tree okay so according to pre-order the root node should come first so for this element one this will become my root node after it left part so two will become my left part after it again this two will become again sub root so as i say that first root left part right part and i will uh, like iterate through each and every first of all i will go into the depth as i build my tree so for two 
2 again 2 will become root so for root the left part should come right so uh, 4 will come on the left part of my left side of my 2 because 2 is a root in itself and after that minus 1 so for this minus 1 it will re it represents uh, that the root has ended uh, null value so this represents null null and as i hit null i will go to the right part after left i should move to right right so i will here i will come one right i hope you are getting it so i will move on the right side now for a particular root node for a particular root node left and right part is sorted now i will move to the top word and for this top word the left part is sorted now for root is sorted left part is sorted now i need to take care of my right part so i will add phi on the right part of my tree now after it here it is showing minus one so for this minus one and left is for this node for this phi node left part is sorted now right part right part is also minus one so for this phi left and right are sorted so i will come back i will come back and uh, here you can see that for this root node one the left part is sorted now uh, now i need to take care of my right part so here this is three right so i will add 3 on my right side after it it is showing minus 1 again so for this minus 1 yeah as i hit minus 1 i will iterate back now for this 3 node as a root it is uh, its left part is sorted now i need to take care of its right part so i will add 6 here on the right part after it again minus 1 so minus 1 after it 1 minus 1 right so this will this structure i should get when i build my tree so if I remove minus 1, then my tree should look like this 1, 2, uh, 4, 5, 3, 6. So, this is my tree structure which I have built it from this given data. So, I hope you have understood how I have built my have builded my tree using this pre-order sequence. Now I want you guys to build uh, in order and post order uh, following the same rule but the only change will be the left part should come first after the root after the right part right this is the only difference now let us code this thing and we will understand it even more better when we code this i have imported a ja import java.util.star after it i have created my public star public class java programming is my file name now what i'm gonna do is first of all i will create a static class static class uh, let me give node so you can see that in node we have uh, data this is my root node left part right part so uh, int data after that uh, node left left part node left part and node right part so uh, node left after that node right now after that i am going to create my constructor node and here i will pass my data int int data and here i will give this dot data uh, is equals to data after that this dot left this dot left is equals to null and this dot right this dot right is equals to null now after creating my class i will create another class uh, let me give here uh, static class binary tree so this class will build my binary tree right so i am creating a class binary tree in this first of all let me uh, create a function uh, before that i am creating a static variable to maintain the index so int uh, idx is equals to minus one after that i am creating a function uh, to build my binary tree so for that i am create public static uh, node node is my function name node build uh, node is my written data type after it build tree in this i will pass node array int node array right i will pass collection of like uh, integer array right okay int i will pass here in this i will pass uh, notes array so int notes i will pass integer data type parameter now after that here is showing some kind of error uh, this method must return some okay so after that what i will do is after like creating my what i will do is i will increment index index plus plus after that if my node 
nodes of idx is equals to minus 1 then what I will do is I will return return null after that I will create a node new node is equals to new node of nodes of that particular index after that uh, I will create a new node dot left new node dot left is equals to build a tree of nodes right I am calling this I am creating this function so new node dot right new node dot right is equals to build tree of nodes after it finally return new node and after it in the main program what I'm gonna do is I will create public static void main string ergs string ergs in this I will create int nodes and let me take the example which we have taken right after that binary tree uh, of let me give the object name as tree is equals to new binary tree before that node I am creating root node root is equals to node root is equals to uh, tree dot build tree I am calling my function after that here I am printing system dot out dot print root dot data here I need to give root root dot data okay here I need to give root dot data okay now let me explain you what I did so first of all I have created a static uh, node class so you can see that uh, let me come here let me come here so here you can see uh, here okay let me take this as an example mm, okay So uh, here you can see that each node, this is a node, right? So each node is having some data, it is storing some data and it is having some left part and the right part. So what I have created is that first of all, I have created node class and this node will have data and node left part this left part and after that node right part and in this node class I have created a constructor to initialize the whatever the elements I am creating in my node and second thing I did what I did is I have created a binary tree class and this binary tree class is used to create my binary tree in my programming and in this what I have created is I have created a build tree function build tree function so what this function is doing is it is taking a set of data so I have created uh, this is a data right this is an integer type data so what I am doing is I am passing this array to this function build array function and after passing I am checking whether my given uh, like tree whether the build tree is initially empty or not if it is empty then return null and after returning null what i am doing is i am creating a new node and i am adding as the one value as my root node and same as a, as i am adding this in my given root node using this constructor using this class uh, I, I am creating my overall binary tree so in the code let me explain you let me explain you what I am doing so here you can see that first of all I have created initially I have, I'm, I have created a idx variable so initially this variable stores minus one because there are no elements present there are no nodes in my binary tree now when I call this function for this set of data you can see that this is my set of data right so I am passing this function using uh, this build tree function right so when i call this function what this function did is first of all it has incremented the idx value it means that index will show that some nodes have been created in my tree now after that if nodes is minus one it means that for the if i am getting any node information as minus one it is a indication that i am getting null so if i am getting null then i am returning null okay after that what i am doing is i am creating new node with that particular index with that particular element and after creating my index what I am doing is I am calling the same function for my left part and I am calling my same recursive function for my right part and one more thing is that I hope you have understood overall code now one more thing is that in 
trees whenever we are doing the problems of trees and binary size trees we mostly use the concepts of recursions because we assume that if i know the like small solution uh, small problem solution then i will get the big problem solution we will uh, study uh, why we use recursions in detail in the next slide but for now you need to remember that in generally in general we use the concepts of trees uh, in we use the concepts of recursions in various problem solving questions of trees so what i did is first of all i have created my new node and uh, as I create my new node, you can see that in the constructor I have to pass some data. So, what data I am passing is that for that at that particular index, whatever the element present, I am passing that element as my data. Now, after that, I am calling the same build tree function for my left part, and I am calling the same uh, like function build tree function for my right part. And after calling, after calling, what I am doing is finally I am returning my whatever the node I have created. So this is the code for my function. Now. Uh, here in the main program after creating my tree what I am doing is I am printing my root node so if I run this program then my output should be 1 because I know that in my tree structure the top element present is 1 so if I run this code then my output should give me 1 now let me save and run so it is showing me that index out of bond so why it is showing that here I need in the recursion I need to give some other conditions I guess so if I am checking that uh, uh, if I uh, come across any node which is greater than or equals to uh, is equals to minus one it means that it is a null indication okay now one more thing is that as I call my recursion function if uh, what if the function uh, which I am getting is uh, the last element right let's say I am calling the uh, recursion function call for my last element and this last element will also call for the next element if there are no next element then I will get index out of bound uh, error so let me save here I need to give if my index is node dot length then I should also return null okay now let me save and run so you can see that I got the output as one right i hope you have understood overall i have created a static class node after it my function binary tree after it i am calling my uh, in the main program i am creating the objects of whatever the classes i have like uh, described i hope you have understood overall working of my code and how we build tree binary tree in my code now let us talk about different traversal techniques that we generally use to traverse a given particular binary tree so if you recall linked list we in the linked list chapter to traverse each and every node in my linked list we used iterative approach similarly in this we are uh, like we use different approach to traverse a particular given binary tree and one of them is pre-order so in pre-order the rule of pre-order is that you should print root node first after it go to the sub part left sub part and after completing the whole left sub part come to the right part right sub tree part so this is the rule of pre-order now to understand how pre-order works let us take example that let's say that this is my given binary tree so pre-order sequence says that first of all i should print my root node first after it go to the left sub part of my array and after it go to the left sub part of my tree right so what i will do is let's say that this is my output so first of all i will print root node first it means that i will print one after it i will go to its left part so for one what is the left part two is my left part so i will go to two so if you observe clearly from the perspective of two it is a root in itself because it is having branches it is having children so if a root is having children then it is uh not a leaf so if it if it is not a leaf it means that it is a root and if it is a root then what it will do is first of all print root so i will print true first after that i will move to its left part so the left part is four so you can observe that for four there are no left and right part it means that for to left there are no elements so there are no further elements to go down to go down on its left side because there are no elements in here if there are no elements then print 4 i will print that element and you can see that for root 2 the left part is completed root is completed and we are left with right part so i will print the right part so i will print the right part and the control will come back to 1 now for 1 root is completed the left part is completed now i need to take care of my right part so i will come to the right part 
you can see that for 3 there is no left part so first of all i will print 3 here root first after the left part now there is no left part so i will go to the right part so for this uh, 3 node the right part is 6 so for 6 there are no right and left part so for this 6 node root node there are no left and right part so for uh, i will print 6 as my output and the control will go back back and something like this so my output will be for pre-order sequencing for pre-order travel cell my output will be 1 2 4 5 3 6 so this is a pre-order travel so i hope you have understood so what we will do first is first of all i will print my root node after it i will go to its left part and as i move to its left part i will iterate through each and everything and i will print the left part first after it the right part you can see that from the perspective of one one is a root node so first of all i am printing the root node after that its left part after that its right part so this is a structure this is a flow i will follow when i talk about pre-order now let us uh, write the pseudo code so first of all i will print let's say that this is my function public static and pre-order is my function name right and in this i will pass my root node as my parameter i will pass the root node and you, we already know that we, uh, for a particular node uh, i will have its left part information right part information and the data which i am storing if you recall the node class in node class i am storing three things right into data left right so each node each node will have these three things left part right part node right uh, data okay so for root node uh, root is itself a node so first of all i will print root dot data and after that i will call my recursive function for the left part so i will call my function pre-order for root dot left and i will call my function pre-order for root dot left part so this is my function calling from fun recursive function calling so if you recall recursions you can see that there will be always a base case so my base case is if my particular root let's say that this is my root right and my function calling continues 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 and i hit a base case where root children are null or let's say that here this is a null this is a null right so if i hit a null then what i will do is if i if a particular root value is null then i will return null zero or let's say null so if root is equals to null this will be my key base case that if root is equals to null then i will return from that thing that that's all now let me code this thing such that it will become even more clear to you guys so here after building my tree in the binary class itself what i'm doing is i'm creating my class public static void and i'm giving the function name as pre-order in this i will pass my root node so i will pass my root node int root so if my root this is my base case what is my base case base case is that if root is equals to null if i am hitting a node which is null then what i will do is i will return from my function basically return now what i have to do is that first of all in pre-order what is the rule first print root node after it call function for my left part and after it call function for my right part so i will print system dot out dot print first root dot data so root dot data now after that i will call pre-order function pre-order for root dot root dot left after that call my pre-order function for root dot root dot right this will this is this three lines this simple three lines is uh, like basically a function which is used to, to travels all the nodes now in the main program instead of uh, here instead of like calling root dot data just printing root dot data i am printing i am calling my function pre-order function and in this i need to pass root as my parameter right so i will pass my root node now let me save this thing and run so if i what i am doing is first of all i have created uh, root node uh, pre-order function and in this i have explained you what is my base case how function calling is happening now in the main function i have created a data i have created my binary tree and after creating binary tree i am calling my pre-order function right right let me save this thing and run so if i run this code then i should get my output whatever the notes i am creating so it is showing some kind of error okay here i need to yeah i don't need to print anything right because uh, it is a void type function so it will not return anything okay now let me remove this now save and run so you can see that i got my output as 
वन टू फोर फाइव थ्री सिक्स एंड दिस इज द सेम आउटपुट वी गॉट हिया दिस इज द सेम आउटपुट वन टू फोर फाइव थ्री सिक्स वी गॉट हिया आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड हाउ द ओवरऑल वर्किंग ऑफ प्री ऑर्डर वर्क नाउ इफ आई वॉन्ट मेक अ लिटिल बिट ब्यूटिफुल देन आई विल रिमूव एल एन हिया एंड गिव अ स्पेस लेट मी सेव दिस थिंग एंड रन अगेन so you can see that i got the output 1 2 4 5 3 now let us talk about other traversal techniques now in tree traversal we have other uh, traversal techniques which is known as in order traversal so it is like same very similar to in order uh, pre order which we did before but the only difference is that first of all i will print the left part of my part like uh, left part of my given tree after the root node after the right part now uh, to understand this let us take example that this is my example now what i will do is first of all i will keep on going i will keep on calling my recursion function until i hit my left part leaf node so this is my uh, root node right so i will keep on traversing to its left 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 until i hit my leaf node so this is my leaf node so as i hit my leaf node first of all i will print that node so i will print 4 after that root node so for 4 what is the root node 2 is my root node right after it its right part so for this root 2 left part is completed right part is 5 now after the left part this is my left part for with from the perspective of one so this is my left part now after this is my root node so root node now i will go keep on calling my function for my right part so i will key call my function for 3 and this will call 6 and uh, right part i will keep on calling my function for my right part so uh, right part function uh, recursion function will continue so first of all i will call this 3 after this 3 will call the left part if there is no left part then it will call right part and before calling right part i will print the root of this right part node leaf node so for this what is the root node 3 is the root node so i will print 3 after it the i will print 6 so my output will be 4 2 5 1 3 6 so this is the overall working so in the function what i will call is that first of all let us say that this is my function public static in order i will pass root node and the base case remains same that if root node is equals to null if root node is equals to null then basically i will return now what i will do is i will call my function in order for root node dot left after that i will call i will print system dot out dot print root node dot data i will print roots node data after that i will call the function root node dot write so this will become my pseudo code this will become my overall code of my in order travel so now let us code this thing okay so uh, here i am creating my function public uh, static static void and here i am giving uh, in order right in order in this i am passing my root node so node root in this here let me give node root now my base case my base case is that if my root node is null if my root node is equals to null then what i will do is i will return from my program that's all now my recursion function calling so first of all i will call to my left part after that root node after that my right part so i will call my in order function in order for root dot left part root dot left now after that i will print the root node data right root node dot data and let me give a space such that it will look good when i am printing it now i will call root node root dot right part this is a function for in order travel cell so in post order sequence what it says is first of all go to the left part of my given sub tree and after it go to the right part of my tree and finally print the root node so here the root node will come at very last now let us take an example let's say that this is my given tree right so what i will do is i will print the left part first so for this particular thing what is the left part and the most left part is 4 let's say that this is my output screen so first of all i will print 4 after that print left after that after printing right uh, after printing left print the right part so the right part for this particular node is 
5 so i will print 5 and finally print 2 right root now after printing root left part is now completed so this is my left part from the perspective of root 1 uh, node 1 right after that i will print the right part so i will print the 6 and 3 right after that this is my right part and finally i will print my root node so this is my root node so if i run the so if i write the pseudo code then my output will be public uh, static void main uh, let me give post order and here i will pass my root node and if my root node is empty this will become my base case that if root node is equal to null then return that's all written come out of my program else what i will do is i will call my post order function for root dot left after that i will call my call the same recursive function for root dot right and finally print my root system dot out dot print print root so this is the code for post order travel so now let us code this thing so here i will write my function public static void post order post order in this i will pass my root node node root here root node now if my root is equals to null this will become my base case that if root node is equals to null then uh, what i will do is i will come out of my function after that i will call my same post order function for root dot left root dot left and same function for post order root dot right now after that i will print system dot out dot print and print my root dot data root dot data so this is a function for uh, post order now in the main function what i will do is i will write my post order and remove this yep okay now let me save and run so if i run this then my output should be uh, the output which i got now so let me save and run so here we got the same output as we dry run right and the top node the top root node will come at last in post order you can see that we got the last node which is nothing but our root node for my binary tree as my output at the very last so this is the three traversal techniques that is in order uh, pre-order in order and post order now let us talk about another interesting travel cell technique so uh, let us uh, now in this travel cell techniques the name of the travel cell technique is known as level order travel cell so as i told you that hierarchy is divided into different segments and we call each segment as a level so this is my level one this is my level two and this is my level three so if i want to print my given uh, tree in order from the perspective of levels then it is known as level order travel cell so for what i will do is let's say that this is my output so whatever the elements present in my level one i will print that first so in level one there is only one element one node so i will print one after that on level two there are two elements so i will print two three whatever the elements present in there in that particular level i will print that particular elements in level three there are three elements that are four five six so this will be my output so this is known as level wise travel cell now the thing you need to remember here is that level wise travel cell is also known as breadth first search or breadth first travel cell right and the thing the three travel cell techniques we have studied right a pre-order in order in order pre-order and post order this is known as depth first travel so dft and this is known as bft so in uh, if you observe clearly we what we did is in pre-order pre post order and in order travel cell is that we keep on calling our like recursion function for my left part right part so what we did is we have gone to what's the depth the uh, like depth part of my given tree so here what is the depth part the last node in my given uh, like uh, tree is my depth Depth, first, uh, depth path so what i did is i have keep on calling my recursion function for my depth for my leaf nodes so until i hit my leaf node i have been calling my recursion function so this is known as depth first travel cell and uh, travel cell techniques which we did pre-order in order post order falls under uh, depth first travel cell and level wise order level wise travel cell is known as breadth first 
सर्च और कैन से बेट द फर्स्ट ट्रैवल सर एंड वी विल स्टडी अबाउट दिस बी एफ टी एंड डी एफ टी इन द अपकमिंग चैप्टर इन ग्राफ चैप्टर विल स्टडी अबाउट दैम इन डिटेल बट फॉर नो यू नीड टू रिमेंबर दैट लेवल वाइज ट्रैवल सर इज नथिंग बट बी एफ टी एंड प्री ऑर्डर इन ऑर्डर पोस्ट ऑर्डर दिस इज नोन एज दिस इज नथिंग बट डी एफ टी इट मीन्स डट वी कीप ऑन कॉलिंग अवर फंक्शन अंटिल वी हिट अ बेस केस राइट सो गोइंग इन टू द डेप्थ इज नोन एज डेप्थ वाइज ट्रैवल सर एंड प्रिंटिंग द एलिमेंट्स इन सेगमेंट wise or level wise is known as breadth wise breadth first traversal now let us talk about how we go, are going to perform level wise traversal so to perform level wise traversal let's say that this is my given tree so to perform level wise traversal what we are going to do is we are going to use a iterative approach and one more thing is that we are going to use a queue data structure so let's say that this is my queue right so Well, I will create a queue, and uh, let's say that the name of the queue is something queue. Now, what I will do is I will travel level wise. So this is my level one, level two, level three, right? So as I iterate through each and every level, whatever the elements present in that particular level, I will add that uh, element into my queue. So on level one, there is only one node, which is root node. So I will add root node. into my queue so i will add root node into my queue after that what i will do is i will remove the root node from my queue so i will remove this root node from my queue and as i remove this root node from my queue i will print that root node data so this is my output right so whatever the root node data is present the root node data is one here so i will print one after it i will print uh, after it what i will do is i will add the childrens of this node so what are the childrens of 1 2 3 so i will add the childrens of this node into my queue so i will add 2 and 3 into my queue now after adding what i will do is i will remove this node and after removing i will print the next line here so i will print the next line and i will come on uh, into my queue and right now after removing one in queue the front element will become two so i will remove two from my queue and as i remove two from my queue i will add the childrens of two so what are the childrens of two four five so as i remove two i will add four and five into my queue and as i remove two i will print that as my output right so i will print two here and after it i will add now after removing two i will add their children also i have added four five now i will remove three so i will remove three and uh, i will print that as my in my output screen so i will print three here now after removing three i will add the three children so for i will add the three children so the only children which i am having is six so i will add that into my queue so my queue will get completed now 3 is removed 2 is removed 3 is removed now i will remove 4 and as i remove 4 i will print the null elements so what are the null elements uh, i will print i will add the child elements of 4 so there are no child elements so i will print 4 after 5 after 6 right so this will become my level wise travel sir now i hope you have understood overall approach how we are going to do it so i will for root node i will add root node and after that i will remove the root node as i remove the root node i will add their children and i will iterate this same process until i get a base case or you can say a case at which all the nodes are having null as their children or these nodes are nothing but leaf nodes now let us code this thing so here i will create a function public static and let me give void level order travel cell level order in this first of all i will pass my root node root node and here we are going to use a iterative approach not recursive approach iterative approach so in this if my root is null if my root is equals to is equals to null then what i will do is i will return from my program now after if given root is not null then i will create my queue queue of let's say that integer or node because i am storing nodes right so i will create a uh, node queue is equals to new uh, linked list now after that what i will do is i will add the root node so queue dot add root node after that uh, i will run a loop while 
my q is not empty so while q is not empty then what i will do is that first of all uh, i will uh, create a node inside my uh, while loop to keep a track on my current on which node i am performing operation so to keep a track i am creating current node so here yeah, whatever the elements i am removing i will store that element that node into my current node so q dot remove now after storing the current node whatever the elements i am removing from my node from my queue i am storing that in my current node now i am checking if current node is equals to is equals to null let's say that i am storing a node which is null then what i will do is i will print a next line if it is not null if after printing next line if my queue become empty if my queue is empty it means that there are no elements so what i will do is i will break the overall uh, iterative statement else what i do is i will add the next element so i will add uh, q dot null okay so if my queue is empty then i will break uh, from my loop else what i will do is that i will add q dot add and i will add null value and what why i am adding null is because i need to make a differentiation right for this particular level i need to print this so why i am adding null is to like make sure on which line i am printing my output so for example here you can see that uh, let me come here uh, right this is my level wise traversal so when i remove the element you can see that i got one on top after two three after four five six to make this differentiation i'm adding null so this is my q right uh, let me write here so this is my q right so one so as i add one i'm adding null as well because this null like shows me that i need to print a next line if i'm not adding null then my output will look like this one two three four five six so to print my output in this order in this fashion i'm adding null i hope you have understood the logic now after it i will add two three after it i will add again null now after it i will add four five six after it i will add null so for what i will do is first of all i will remove one and i will print one here after it when i come across null i will print the next line and remove null now after that i will um, print 2 remove 2 after that print 3 after that uh, remove 3 now i got null again it means that if i got null then i need to print the next line so i will come on next line and i will print 4 5 6 correspondingly remove that as well so 4 5 6 after that, null and my queue is empty if the queue is empty then i'm i will break i come out of my loop so to print this in this order i am using null i am adding null to make a differentiation that i need to print this in a next line so i will for the uh, outer if loop i am writing the else statement that q dot add print system dot out dot print uh, current node dot data c u r r node dot data and give some space after that what i will do is that if uh, current node current node dot left is not null then add that in my queue current node left is not null after printing my node i need to add its child right so q dot add current node dot left if current node dot right is not null is not null it means that i need to add that into my queue so q dot add uh, current node dot write the thing now in the place of pre post order i am calling uh, level order traversal so let me give level order traversal now let me save this now let me save and run so you can see that i got the output as follows one two three four five six right this is known as level wise traversal so by using this four techniques which is uh, here pre-order by using pre-order in order and post order uh, we perform dfs dft in our binary tree and to perform level wise to perform level wise traversal we use level wise traversal technique right so this is uh, these are the four different traversal techniques we have studied up to now now let us talk about other questions so in this question we need to find the given height of a tree 
So to, to find height of a tree, we generally do this question based on two different approaches or you can say based on from two different like uh, perspectives. So a uh, height of a particular tree can be calculated through its nodes or we can calculate a particular height of a particular tree using its edges or you can call them as branches, right? So by using these two different approaches, we can calculate height and these two different approaches will give you different answers. What I mean is that, let's say that this is my root node and this is my leaf node, right? So uh, from the perspective of number of nodes, the height is one, two, three. So from the perspective of nodes, the height of this tree is three. Now from the perspective of branches, from the perspective of edges, here this is H1, H2. So from this perspective, the number of uh, the height of the tree is two. Now in this question, what we are going to do is we are going to solve the height of the tree question from the perspective of number of nodes. Or if you want to calculate uh, the height of a tree using edges, then just reduce minus one from our answer. Whatever the like code we are writing, uh, we get the final answer, right? So just remove minus one from that and you will get the answer for number of edges. Now let us talk about what is the actual meaning of a height of a tree. Now you need to understand one thing is that height is defined as a difference between the root node and the deepest leaf. So here you can see that uh, for this particular tree I have taken example. This is my root right. This is my root node and these are the different leaves. Leaf 1, leaf 2 and leaf 3. So the height of a given tree is the difference between the root node and the deepest leaf. So what I mean by that is that among these three different leaves, whatever the leaf which is deepest, that leaf will become my height. So here the height of this tree will be 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5. So for this particular tree, the height will be 5 from the perspective of nodes. And the, from the perspective of edges, the height from the perspective of edges, the height will become 4. So I hope you have understood what is the meaning of uh, height of a tree. Now let us talk about how we are going to do that. So you need to understand one thing that most of the questions which we are going to solve in uh, this chapter, in binary trees uh, chapter, we are going to use the concept of recursion. We use recursion here. So what we do is we use recursion here, right? So most of the questions around 70 to 80 percent of the questions we use recursions mostly and uh, what I have to do is uh, to calculate for a particular node, uh, let's say that uh, this is my node 1. So if I can to calculate the height of root node 1, if I can able to find a way to uh, find the height of the left part and the right part, then I can somehow calculate the height of a tree. Right? Because whatever the maximum, you can see that here the left part and the right part, let's say that the left part is giving me x and the right part is giving me y. So I only consider the height which has maximum value. Right? So let's say that for example, to make it even more clear to you guys that from uh, to for this root node 2, the left part is 4 and the right part height is uh, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So this left part will give me 4 and the right part will give me 1. So whatever the maximum value I get, that maximum value will become my height of a tree, right? Similarly, to calculate the parent's height, to calculate a node height, I need to calculate their child height. So we have two childs, right? Left part and right part. So I will calculate by calling my recursion function. I will keep phase on my recursion function and I will uh, calculate the height of my left part and my right part. And whatever the maximum value I have, I will choose that value as my child height and I will give that to my parent. And that thing will become my height of that particular tree from the perspective of parent. So what I will do is first of all I will calculate left part height right. So I will let's say I am creating a function height and here I will pass my root node right. So what I will do is that first of all I will call my function for my left part. So I will calculate a left part. So I will call my recursive function left height and I will call root dot left. 
After that, I will calculate right height for a particular node. I will calculate the left part and the right part. So right height is equal to height. I will call the same recursive function height and I will pass the right part of my given root. Right after that, what I will do is that max height is equals to maximum of left height comma right height and I need to include my node itself right so I will add plus one this recursion equation will become my this recursive function will give my height of a tree now the what is the base case here that if I have reached a root node which is null then I will return zero this will become my base case so this algorithm will give the height of a tree. Now let us dry run this thing on my given tree. So let me remove this here. Okay. So what my function will do is that uh, let us talk about uh, from one perspective from root one perspective what I will do is I will call the function for my left part and this two will call the function for my left part and this four will call the function for my left part. So this left part will give me uh, if I am reaching null then I will return 0 so this thing will return 0 and this 4 node will return 1 because I am adding 1 right in this max height I am adding 1 so 4 will give 1 after that I will call for my right part so this will call on my right part again null so this thing will give 0 and this will give me 1. So whatever the maximum value I ha am having, I will return that. So among this left part and right part, whatever the maximum value is there, both are same. So I can choose any one I want. So as I choose, I, let's say I am choosing 1. So I will return to my parent function calling. Let's say this is my parent, right? So to this parent, I will return this value plus one i am adding one here so i will add one so i will give two as my res resultant value now the left part is completed now i will call for my right part and this thing will give call right part and this thing will call null and this null will return zero and this will return one and this will return two so whatever the maximum value i am having i will take that so both are same so i will take two and the height will become two plus one that is 3. So the height of this tree is 3. So I will print max height as my output. So I will print system.out.print max height. So I hope you have understood overall working of this like uh, code and the uh, approach which we have followed. Now let us code this thing. So in, in the program what I did is initially I have created my node class. After that I have created this tree structure by writing this now what i will do is that i will create a function i will create a function let's say that public uh, public static int height so i will return a integer so int height in this i will pass my node root so in this what is my base case what is my base case my base case is that if my root is equals to is equals to null then what i will do is that i will return zero as my output now I need to call my recursion function calling so for that I need to store int left height is equals to uh, same height function for root dot left root dot left after that for my right part for my right part of my root is equals to height of root dot right after that what I am doing is that I will return the maximum height value so math dot max math dot max of LH comma MH and plus one i will give plus one because i need to include my root my main root itself right so i will give one so in the main program i will uh, call my function height and i will pass my root and whatever the output it is returning this function this three line function is returning then i will print that as my output now let me save and run so if i run this output then for this three you can see that the height is three right so let me save and run So you can see that I got the output as 3. So this is how we will print the height of a particular tree by just writing these three lines. We can calculate the height of a given tree. Now let us talk about some other problems. And now in this question we need to calculate the number of nodes present in my given tree. So what I will do is that the approach of this question is first of all let's say that this is my given tree right. So to calculate the uh, given 
overall number of nodes present for my particular tree you need to remember one thing that in the question we will be only given the root information and from the root we need to extract overall like uh, how many nodes are present in my given tree so what i will do is that first of all uh, i will make a logic that if I can able to find the children's number of node then I can calculate the parent number of nodes because the total number of nodes the total number of nodes is equals to my root node root node plus number of nodes on left side left children having plus number of nodes on my right child having if I can calculate this equation then I can overall calculate the number of like a nodes present in my thing in my given tree right so this is the recursive equation so my root node which is nothing but one I, I need to calculate number of right so my root node is considered as a one node and whatever the nodes it will give me x and whatever the nodes this will give me y this sum will become total number of nodes now here I need to calculate left count and right count or you can say left part number of uh, uh, nodes and right part number of nodes so what I will do is that first of all I will call my function left count is equals to let's say that I am creating a function count and I will pass my left part of my given tree and this recursive function will I, I need to keep faith on my function that it will somehow give my output after that I will write r count right part count is equals to count of root node dot right part and my base case will be if root becomes 0 if root becomes null then I will return 0 as my output right and what I will do is I will return or print total count and what is total count total count total count is equals to left count plus right count plus 1 this will become my overall algorithm now let us dry run this thing so initially what my function do is uh, what my function does is it will call this fun this root sub part and this thing again call the left part and this thing will call again the null value so the null value will return 0 right when the null value returns 0 it will call the right part and this right part also returns 0 so this 4 node will return 0 plus left part plus right part plus 1 so this will return 1 now this 2 node will call my right function my right node and this 5 will perform the same thing right so this will also give me 1 so what this thing give uh, what this 2 node will give is that uh, left part plus right part and it will count itself as a node as a single node so this thing will give me 3 and after that uh, after calling the overall output of left part I will call the right part function I will call call r count so this will call this and here null right so null will give me 0 and this thing will give me 1 and this thing will give me 2 and my final output will be my right part so this is my uh, left part and this is my right part right right count so my output will be 3 plus 2 and this one node will in include itself so plus 1 so my output will be 6 so this is the thing and let us code this thing so here let me create a function public static int count in this I will pass node root and if the base case is that if root is equals to is equals to is equals to null then what I will do is I will return 0 I will return 0 after that I will calculate int left count is equals to count of my root dot root dot left part root dot left part and int right count is equals to count and root dot right part after that what I will do is I will return left count plus right count plus 1 and in the main program let me call the function here let me call count function yep now if I run this code then my output should be 6 uh, here the number of elements are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so the number of for this particular tree the number of uh, nodes are present are 7 so my output should be 7 now let me save and run here uh, I think uh, okay it is showing some kind of error this is a comment right now let me save and run so you can see that I got the output as 7 
So this is how we will calculate the count of a particular uh, number of nodes present in my given tree. Now let us talk about how we can calculate the sum, total number of uh, uh, sum of uh, all nodes present in my binary tree. <laughs> so in this question we need to find the not the count but the sum total number of sum of all the nodes present in my given uh, like uh, overall binary tree so we will follow the same approach which is first of all for a given node i i can i try to calculate the left part sum after the right part sum so can i write an equation that for a particular node for a particular nth node uh, the sum the sum uh, equation will be the node value the node dot data value node dot data plus the left part sum plus the right part sum the right part sum so this equation will become my recursive equation and if i can able to calculate the left part sum and the right part sum then it is it will become easy for me to calculate the sum because i already know the nodes data all i need to find is to find the sum of the left side and the right side and my recursive function will do the work i need to keep faith on my recursive function so what i will do is that i will create a variable left sum and i will call the same thing that is root dot left and after that i will uh, call the right part so right sum is equals to sum of root dot left root dot right now my tree sum my tree sum will become left sum plus right sum plus root dot data this will become my tree sum now the base case here is same that if i have reached a null value if i if my root is null then i will return zero this is my uh, like overall algorithm now let us dry run this so what my function does is it will call the left part it will call two and this two will call this and this will call null and null will return zero and after calling this i will call the right part also so this will also return zero and this four the node four node will return zero left part plus zero right part plus the root dot data so for this root what is the data four so i will return four now after it, it will call this and this will return five so combining these two and two values so four plus five plus two so this will give me 9 plus 2 11 so i will return 11 here from this side and after that i will call on my right side right part of my tree so this will call 3 and this will call 6 and this will call null so null will return 0 and this will return 6 and this will return 6 plus 3 and my final value for this particular node will be 4 or you can say 11 plus 1 this is my left part this is my root node and this is my 6 plus 3 is my right part so the output will be 11 plus 1 plus 9 so the output will be 21 so this is how i will calculate the sum of the nodes now let us code this thing so in the function in the program i will create my function public static static uh, int sum or you can say tree sum in this i will pass my node in this i will pass my node root root after that if my root is null this is my base case that is root is equals to is equals to null then what i will do is i will return zero now i will perform my work so int left sum left sum is equals to uh, i will call the same function tree sum and i will call root dot left and after that int right sum right sum is equals to tree sum i will call the same function and i will call root dot right right after that i will calculate total sum so int total or i can directly return so return uh, left sum plus right sum plus the root dot data value so root dot data so let me save and give a statement terminator and in the main function i am calling my sum function so sum function and for this particular tree for this particular tree i will whatever the output i will get we will see so let me save and run <coughs> so it is showing some kind of error can't find the symbol oh i need to give here tree sum so tree sum okay now let me save and run 
so you can see that I got the output as 28 because this is the tree I have created so for this tree the total sum is 28 so I hope you have understood how we build a tree in our program and whatever the like different traversal techniques like uh, DFT BFT traversal techniques after that we have performed some basic questions now in the next part we'll study about some more concepts and we'll do some more questions so with that being said I will see you in the next one